Last week you joined us and Lenny as we blasted from the Northern Territory all the way to Brisbane. And tomorrow we're gonna have 800 k's to do, and the next day another 800. So not your usual pub patrons. Jeez, we're missing a lot of stuff. Yeah, Bloody blasting <laughs> through the country. Just what you want to see. Just after uh, driving a couple of thousand k's in a couple of days, and you're uh, an hour away from your destination. Massive traffic jam. In this week's episode. But we're actually going out to a little company called uh, Super Peg and Super RV. It's in Armadale. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to throw the ute on a way bridge. <laughs> going to give the ute some much needed love today. We're finally getting back on the road, so we're keen to get, get going and, you know, get back to it and go up to Queensland. All right, so we're off to Yurunga now. And we're just gonna have a pretty casual couple of nights there and I reckon we're just trying to do a lot of fishing. <laughs> yeah. I'm Matt. And this is Holly. We've been traveling around Australia for the past 12 months in our old Toyotas, going to some of the most incredible locations. Subscribe and join the adventure. We spend a few days in Brisbane and then head back down towards Armadale. Brisbane to Armadale is about a five hour drive. After spending a little time in Armadale with family and friends, we then head to Yurunga for a couple of days. Hey everyone, so uh, we got something pretty fun today. Uh, we're just in Brisbane, we've been here for a few days, uh, just staying at mates. But we're actually going out to a little company called uh, Super Peg and Super RV. Um, they're a little Aussie owned four wheel driving camping company and they make um, like really, pretty much really high end sort of um, products. But uh, they focus on tent pegs and really high quality sort of tarp poles and canvas products as well. So they're doing awnings and sort of starting to get into all that kind of stuff. So yeah, we're just going to go out and uh, have a little look around their factory and their uh, creation process, I suppose, and pretty much just what they do out there. So yeah, it should be fun. I guess this is one of the original models we did, our Stand Easy Deluxe. Um, designed as just a, more, a bit more robust, but has all the heavy duty Australian made canvas. Um, so that was sort of the original morning we started with. As sort of things got a bit you know, more competitive, blah, 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 sort of had to pick things up. And then we went down using our same componentry and fittings. Yeah. Well, that's the thing I've noticed. Because obviously I've got things on at the moment. It's a cheap brand, it's a budget brand, and it's everything in between that's, that fails. It's the Velcro, yeah. um, Eyelets. So aside yeah, from the aside from the canvas, everything else is comparable to what we use here. So we're using yeah. all our fittings. So this is where a lot of the stuff is sort of made next door, moulding and a lot of our tube work. Yep. And then we bring it over here and do a bit of the. Stuff. What we actually have on our website is a fraction of the campaign. We just sort of okay. go, this is the more popular stuff. Yeah, alright, so if you need anything custom made, anything yeah. to do with shelter, then these are your guys. And what do you reckon, sort of moving to the future, you guys are going to keep concentrating on this kind of stuff? or? Oh, look, I think it's, don't want to spread ourselves too thin. Yeah, definitely. Sort of, yeah, definitely be the be the go to people to get all the stuff done. And there seems yeah. to be a lot, a lot of stuff out there that needs replacing. Yeah, yeah, as I said, I mean, a lot of people they're going to start on that cheaper, cheaper end, but you know, if they enjoy, you know, enjoy full driving, enjoy touring, they're going to want to move. I, it's just exactly where we're at right now. Kind of excited to get rid of this. <laughs> so, we're getting a new awning put on um, to replace our King's awning here, Super Peg and Super RV do some really high-end awnings with canvas that's made in Australia. Um, but to remain competitive against, you know, your bigger companies like Kings and that, they're pumping out really cheap stuff. Um, they've got a more of a, uh, yeah, a competitive lower-end awning. Uh, it's recommending, recommended retail price is around $200, um, which is really competitive compared to this. But it's based off their own fittings and all the componentry in between. So, which is where this one's failed uh, all the time. So I'm really keen to see how it goes, and I would, uh, I mean I haven't used it yet, but I think it's going to be great, and I would say if you're in the market for an awning, work, and you're, you're a young fellow, you're getting into forward driving, 
do that one extra shift at work or save your pennies, maybe you have a few less beers in the weekend, whatever. Whatever you need to do to save that extra 80 bucks and just get the better awning and yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll never regret it, that's for sure. Because you guys really thought of everything, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you guys have thought of everything. Oh, love it. So I do love, I. I love seeing well-engineered, well-made stuff. Just, it's Aussie, it's just a big plus. <laughs> <laughs> We're just in Armadale, um, <clears throat> and we're going to throw the ute on a way bridge. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. I've always said, yeah, I'm thinking under GVM, but I mean, that's a bit of a silly thing to say. So we'll check, see how much weight we've been carrying around the country, but we've got a lot of stuff to get rid of. So what we're going to do is weigh it, see how much we weigh, and then we're going to see how much we can get rid of, do a cull, and then come back and re-weigh it. So it'll be interesting. 2.94. A little bit over GVM. <laughs> Just a little bit. Oh, well, there you go. 2.94. Cool. So, we need some culling. <laughs> so, we're in Armadale at Holly's Farm. As you can see, it's pretty uh, very dry out here at the moment. There's fires close by in Ebor, so obviously you can see the smoke, but yeah, it's just horrible how dry it is here. We're going to take this opportunity. We've got a bit of room in the shed here to finally cull stuff out of the ute. Are you excited, Hot? I'm so excited. We're yeah. going to shed a lot of weight, hopefully. Get rid of a heap of weight and just stuff, just so we can mm. just pack everything easier and just yeah. more room to breathe in the ute. It's yeah. going to be good. <laughs> So uh, we've just taken a whole heap of stuff out of the ute and we managed to get the weight lower in the canopy. Um, I reckon we could probably took about 100 kilos of stuff. I uh, was looking for a little drive then, just through the paddocks, and sort of tried to get it at an angle and it just feels so much better. It just doesn't roll as much. It's like just instantly better. So good. Gonna give the ute some much needed love today. I'm um, just gonna give it a service, just all the fluids. Grease the suspension, dry shafts, new joints, all that kind of thing, and cool it. Love day for you. Clean. I'm gonna take this panel off. Hopefully, we can figure out where this snorkel's vibrating. <laughs> and I am gonna clean it. The inside, anyway. The, the inside has not been cleaned for a very long time. Service is done, so we've done the oil, this fluids, oil, coolant, oil filter, and then just greased up all the drive shafts and the suspension, cleaned the air filter, just simple things. Now we're just taking off the front panel here, along with the snorkel, see if I, we can find where it's vibrating. We've been going around Australia with this snorkel vibrating, but. Yesterday we finished, well Matt finished the service and we did a bit of a spruce, a bit of, yeah, a, a, bit of a spring clean on the highlights. Yeah. And so yeah, we took the panel off for the snorkel and tried to fix maybe where yeah, it was vibrating. Yeah, we put vibrating. some sort of like, not like, pretty much like pinch weld around the outside of the panel where I thought it might have been vibrating, but we did heat sink. Like, I redid the seal on the snorkel, I was just really made sure it's good just in case you have to do some deep river crossings in Queensland. Um, yeah, now's the moment of truth to see if a, a de-vibrating worked. Exactly where the, the snorkel used to vibrate. <laughs> oh my god, everybody! I think we've fixed the vibration. <laughs> Let's just get down the road. Let's not celebrate too soon. <laughs> we've done that before. You can hear like it's better. Well, it's way it's not really doing it. I think it's that's that's a win on that's a fix. That's a fix. <laughs> All right, everybody! Woo! Thumbs up in the video if you love the fact that the snorkel won't vibrate anymore as we're driving. You have to listen to its drone. <laughs> Thumbs up for that. Thumbs up. Thumbs up if you miss it already, like me. <laughs> I've just learned to love it and the trip now it's gone. What are we doing? We are putting it.
getting our new fridge. No you, we're just going to have to change the build out and the canopy a little bit to make it fit. This is a 45 litre fridge, but it's quite a bit bigger, even though it's only 5 litres uh, more capacity because the insulation, the walls are a lot thicker. So that's less power draw, um, it's only better, it'll only work better because of it. But um, yeah, just a little bit of modification today, so... <laughs> What were they doing? They're eating the pasta. Uh, 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 this one might be a bit better. Uh, yeah. So after a massive couple of weeks, um, we're finally getting back on the road. So we're keen to get get going and you know, get back to it and go up to Queensland uh, just before Christmas. So just in the past few weeks, this is what we've done. We uh, went from Darwin to Brisbane. We did that in three days. And then we went to a mate's wedding on the East Coast in New South Wales. Uh, then we went back to Holly's Farm in Armidale. Uh, we were here for a week or so. And then we bought our Land Cruiser, Elsie. Um, and we drove it back here. But before we got back here, we worked for a month in the Flinders Ranges. Um, at the prairie in Parachilna, and then we got back here. So it's been a bit roller coaster, a couple of weeks, pretty disruptive as well. I mean, well, not disruptive, but you know, we've been in beds most of the time and in actual <laughs> houses, and yeah, keen to get back to the, the simple life. The good life. <laughs> not that that wasn't good. No, it was, it was good. It a little was little stressful great. at moments. Yeah. I know, we're going to go to the coast. Um, we're going to go to Yurunga. It's going to stay at a caravan park there, and Holly's old man, Paul, is coming with us. Um, he's a very good fisherman, so maybe he will teach me, finally, how to catch a fish. Alright! So, I thought we'd take this opportunity to actually explain what our intentions with Elsie are now, because I don't think we've really explained it. No. Um, so now that it's here, it's over east, what we would like to do is get it registered and get it comfortable to be in and drive so we can enjoy it. We don't have the time, space, money or resources right now to do the job we would love to do which is obviously just full tear down rebuild that would be amazing it's not going to happen anytime soon so it's going to be baby steps we're just going to probably put air conditioning in it get the dust seals sorted new seats oh, and then yeah, a build out seats, yeah. and then we're just going to use yeah. it we want to enjoy it if we start tearing it down now it could be years before we actually yeah. get to enjoy the car but it might be sitting in the shed here for a little while yeah at yet. least a couple months while we're in the hilux going up to queensland Yes. I'm saying goodbye to like a family member. <laughs> or like a baby. An annoying family member. <laughs> yeah, but Who she's works still, most of the time. She's still, yeah, we love her too. Some of the time. Most of the time. No, we love her. Okay, let's do it. Oh, well, it's so good to see a bit of rain around here. Mm. First God knows they need it. First decent rain in four years. <laughs> four years. <laughs> Heaviest rain they've had yet in about four years. So, so we're off to Yurunga now. And we're just going to have a pretty casual couple of nights there and I reckon we're just trying to do a lot of fishing. <laughs> yeah. Paul's in his 75 series. Okay, let's go on holiday. Yeah.
What do you reckon? It's a nice spot. It's a really nice spot. It is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, back on the right. Paul? Cheers, in next week's episode, we spend a few days down in Urunga with my dad and we fish until we cannot fish anymore. Rex Hunt here, um, after last night, just about to go for another fish. You'll have to wait to see if Matt has become any more of a fisherman. How'd the fishing go? We didn't catch anything. Cheers for watching guys, and we'll see you next Monday for some more travelling goodness.